Now, when you say interference frequency <clears throat> uh, for the people who are watching are not tech technically oriented, what do you mean? Interference with radios and television, electrical appliances? We, we were worried things? with things like the interference to radios caused by such things as the first lamp dimmers or when an automobile used to go by the house, we used to hear radio interference in the cars mm -hmm. or see television interference in the early television. And that's the kind of things that General Electric then could not tolerate because we, General Electric manufactured products which made interference and they manufactured products which received it. Therefore, we didn't want to have either one of them. Mm -hmm. How are those problems <coughs> solved? I mean, uh, for a layman, in layman's terms anyway, how, how did you uh, study that and, and eventually resolve those issues? <laughs> Interesting. We developed methods of measurement first, of course, and then devised techniques to reduce the disturbances that occurred on the power system due to the added products that were there. Mm -hmm. then, it, then it basically talked to the de people who were designing the radios and television sets to encourage them to design them to be less susceptible to the radio noise that, came, that appeared at their mm -hmm. doors. So you did solve the problem eventually. Well, apparently we have interference-free television mm -hmm. and the telephones work fine and mm -hmm. radio works good these days. Did you anticipate this, this problem uh, as an engineer uh, when, when uh, these electrical products or devices were, were manufactured and produced? Did you, did you have an idea that there may be a problem before it actually occurred or as, as they were being developed? As we developed special products, we could look at the electrical characteristic of what's going on and predict that there was going to be mm -hmm. some kind of an anticipated problem with mm -hmm. a function. What were the heaviest interference devices? What, what were the more typical susceptible devices that, uh, that had electrical interference? Early, early on were the radios. Uh, as we developed new electronic devices, of course, we used to have uh, uh, computers were, of course, electronic and susceptible to electrical interference. We had mm -hmm. computer interference problems. Yes. And in fact, it's interesting that the computers themselves in the early days generated RF energy, which interfered with radios. Mm -hmm. RF energy meaning radio frequency? Radio frequency, radio frequencies yes. generated just like broadcast, except they weren't intentionally generated. They interfered with radios. Yes. Well, that's pretty interesting. Um, you worked with other devices, too, inverters and fluorescent lighting. and. Uh, each one of these products has some characteristics using electrical energy, which doesn't use it in a nice clean sine wave function, but rather uses it in a step function or which generates electrical characteristics, which are interference in na interfering in nature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what about dimmer switches? I think we talked about dimmer switches before, or real stats. Uh, did you have experience with that or work in those devices too? Well, one, one of the... Uh, early electrical semiconductor products, of course, was the semi SER, which was a device for switching power, like, 20, like the power from the power line. Mm -hmm. And one of the first applications that Johnny Harnd and, uh, and our friends worked on was a lamp dimmer, mm -hmm. which uh, basically turned the voltage off so the light would not be as bright, so we dimmed the lamp. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, you did it with a very sharp time function. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that that does is causes electrical inter causes harmonics, which then cause electrical interference to radios and other things. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned John Harden, Harden, and John is a founder of the Edison Exploratorium here in Schenectady, uh, New York. So John was a fellow engineer. John was a fellow engineer. Worked I'm down still the hall. around today. Worked down the hall from me. Worked down the hall. In building thirty-seven. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. And you still uh, communicate with him to this day? Still talk to John mm -hmm. quite frequently. And uh, Harold, you, you don't live in Schenectady anymore, but you formerly lived in Schenectady. Where do you live now? I now live in Ormond Beach, Florida, which Florida? is mm -hmm. just uh, half a mile north of Daytona Beach. And you were kind enough to meet with us here today in Schenectady, New York, to, uh, to have this visit and this interview. We appreciate it. And you have some family here in Schenectady yeah, County my, yet? My, my daughter still resides in Schenectady. Oh, that's wonderful. We're so glad that you're here. You talked to me uh, earlier <clears throat> in our sort of pre-meeting about the FCC and liaison uh, relationships. Um, were you sort of a, a, a communicator or, a, or a, a representative with the federal government or with the government 
uh, for GE on, on issues such as interference and uh, distortion or uh, those types of uh, issues? Well, the Federal Communications Commission, of course, has regulated and does regulate the reception of radios and television. Now, as a result of that, we, we the electrical industry manufactures some products which causes electrical interference. So there is a problem that the FCC used to be very concerned about because it was a prevalent problem. And as a result of that, there are a number of devices which the commission regulates, which the general electric manufacturers, uh, like microwave ovens and others, which mm -hmm. we, which they write regulations on. The general electric company uh, gave them technical inputs so that the regulations would achieve the objectives of the commission and not be uh, too burdensome on the manufacturer. So, so the company corroborated with the FCC to determine guidelines and safe levels and uh, certain <clears throat> specs and requirements for public consumption of these products? Is that what you're saying? Uh, Something like that? I would that? rephrase it a little bit differently. The yeah. commission proposed regulations and we suggested modifications therein okay. All right. to uh, control, the, control the problem so there would be no problem. I see.